Hare Krishna. Welcome to the Krishna Daily Way of Cooking. So today I am going to share with you a homemade mozzarella cheese recipe. This recipe is pretty simple, but at the same time we have to take care of certain things like the temperature and the quantity used and the entire timing of the process. So this cheese uses uh, vegetable rennet. Vegetable rennet is an ingredient which is used in most of the vegetarian cheese making and it is suitable for using this in ekadashi. I will share the link of the vegetable rennet in the description so that you can buy one for yourself and make this recipe. So without wasting any time, let's proceed towards the recipe. So I'm going to use whole milk. Now this whole milk is non-homogenized and very gently pressurized. Now it is um, having a lot of uh, cream in it which will be helpful in making our cheese. Now one thing is that in India you have the benefit that you can get raw milk. We do not get raw milk here so uh, that is why uh, the cheese quality can be a little different. So here I have used around one and a half teaspoon of citric acid which is also called as nimbuka full. In this I am going to add around a cup of water, stir it well. Now I am going to add a tablespoon of oil. Mix it nicely. You can either use coconut oil or you can even use sunflower oil. Now add the solution of the citric acid and mix it nicely. make sure to mix it nicely now turn on the stove and keep the heat on low the temperature of this milk needs to just get at the room temperature because I had removed that milk from the fridge that's why it needs to reach between 30 to 35 degrees Celsius that is what going to help us now here I have the vegetable rennet. So this rennet actually asks for 2 ml of the liquid of the rennet for around 5 liter of milk. Now every vegetable rennet differs. So this particular vegetable microbial uh, rennet demands for 2 ml of the drop. So what I'm going to do is because I have 4 liter of milk. So as per that I'll be using around 1.6 ml. And that I'll be mixing with around a quarter cup of water. <clears throat> to be on the safer side, I'm going to use around 1.5 ml because uh, adding too much rennet can make your cheese too rubbery, which you do not want. So I'm going to pour this in. Now I'm going to add a quarter cup of water. And then mix this well. Now let it set because this particular rennet asks for setting for 5 minutes. If your rennet doesn't ask that then you can directly mix it with the milk. Now I'm going to add this rennet mixture. And then mix for a minute. Gently stir it. So 
once it reaches the desired temperature then I'm going to put this pot on a different element and then keep it resting for around 45 minutes. So this is between 30 to 35. So now I'm going to just move this. So now here our milk is set. Now this is the thin custard like texture which we have got. Now I'm going to cut this curd mixture horizontally and vertically. Just observe me how I'm doing it. Okay, now horizontal. Let me show you closely. Now I'm going to turn on the stove again and keep the heat between low to medium and raise the temperature between 42 to 45 degrees Celsius. This is between 42 to 45. So now I'll cover this again with a lid, turn it off, and then set it aside for 10 to 15 minutes more. So now I'm going to remove this curdled mixture in a strainer and I'm going to keep a bowl here. So this bowl is here. going to add it here. Oh god, it's heavy. As I'm going to let this water, uh, the whey, drip down and then again put this whey mixture in here and I'm going to heat this whey now. now. I'll show you how to heat it and what all to add in it. So I wanted to show you this. This is the salt I'm going to use. It's actually um, a non iodized salt which is very good in making cheese um, it's actually nothing but like you know you have this coarse uh, sea salt that's what you have to get um, I bought this online I'll try to put the link of this um, in the description but yes this salt will be perfect for using it in the cheese and using a non iodized salt mixture really helps so I'm going to add around a tablespoon to one and a half tablespoon of salt Now after adding the salt, I'm going to mix this well and I will heat this way up around 90 to 95 degrees Celsius. You can even use a spatula or any kind of spoon and just press on this curd so that any excessive whey can just see how much whey has collected to add this whey. Okay, so it reached 90, so I'll keep the heat on low or you can even turn off the stove. And now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add this cauldron mixture for 5 minutes inside this wick. Now I'm going to, first thing is that I'm wearing a glove now because I have to knead this curd and it's going to be very hot so I have to make sure that I don't burn my hands. So you see this? Oh, it's so hot. Okay, I'm going to let first. The idea is to knead this curd, stretch it so that the cheese becomes soft. So I'm going to place the curd here. I'm going to knead the curd here. Once it is a little warm, then you can directly use your hands. But again, when you're putting this curd in the hot water, which you have to, you have to put at least for three to four times or two to three times. So that you can get a nice stretchy texture of the cheese.
Now to set the firmness of this cheese, going to add few ice cubes. In this I'm going to add a little bit of water. Now in this I'm going to keep the cheese and let it set firm. for 5 minutes so let me give you some tips regarding this cheese so you have to make sure all the temperatures which I mentioned that is followed properly you know uh, I have made a lot of times the cheese at home sometimes in the beginning when I was uh, in the previous methods when I was making the cheese I um, uh, kept the temperature to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius while putting the cheese inside the whey and I forgot to turn off the stove and that made the, the whey too hot and that kind of little bit ruined the cheese so you have to main, main, make sure that after you heat the whey up to 90 to 95 degrees Celsius you turn off the stove then you just uh, knead the curd then dip it then remove it. Only the first time you have to put the curd inside for 5 minutes and after that when you are kneading you just have to put for five, uh, like few seconds, remove it out and then again knead it, then again dip it. It depends on you how many times you want to put it in the way and want to knead it because that is going to help you get a nice uh, soft and you know soft, tough soft texture cheese. Now, now if you want like a little firmer cheese like um, which is not too melty and which can just go on the pizza and then along with the regular cheese it can just be a little bit like that cheese chunk then you can add more rennet like I used around 1.5 ml uh, drops you can use around 2 ml so you can do that one more thing is that I have also added salt in this now sometimes it happens that the salt is felt in the cheese sometimes it is not felt so of course there is an additional option when you are grating the cheese you just uh, you know sprinkle some salt on top or what you can do that during the setting time in the cold water the cheese you can add a little bit of salt and just keep it many times many people um, keep the cheese in that same uh, cold water just inside there in the fridge and sometimes some keep it in the way so it is all up to you how you want to do it so that's it so this is how the cheese melted I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And also I'm going to add a little bit of pepper. Let's see. So the cheese turned out pretty good. So for storage purposes, the best thing is to apply a little bit of oil to the cheese, put it in a Ziploc bag and store it in the refrigerator for around one week. Try to use it within, uh, within one week because it's a homemade cheese. So I don't know beyond one week how, how far it will last. And um, I will be also sharing the written recipe of it so do check the website so it will be easy for you to follow through so I hope you like watching this video any questions any queries you can write to me in the comment box I'll solve your problem with that make sure to buy a proper vegetable rennet sometimes the rennets used are not proper and that just ruins the cheese so use the right vegetable rennet a little bit of experiment here and there and then you can get the perfect cheese so if you have not subscribed to the channel and you are new to the channel then please do so like and share and comment and thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more such recipes. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.